John Collins had to get his paper airplane to fly a distance of over 69 meters or 226 feet in order to get into the Guinness Book of World Records. According to Collins, his results could be achieved by anyone who tries hard enough. He even made a few videos explaining in detail how to make your paper aircraft faster, more powerful, and more responsive. However, to repeat the Collins record is not enough for a real paper plane enthusiast. After all, an airplane can cover a much greater distance if it's launched from the International Space Station. What challenges would a paper mini shuttle face? Would a paper plane even be able to land safe and sound on Earth? It can be done. Or so says the president of the Japan Origami Airplanes Association, engineer Takuo Toda. Actually, Mr. Toda is the first person who publicly voiced the dream of launching a paper airplane from space. Together with Professor of Aeronautics and Astronautics Shinji Suzuki, Toda received support from the Japan Aerospace Agency, or JAXA. The scientists were pledged an amount of $780,000 to be allocated for the preliminary studies. You can only wonder how such a trivial project managed to get such significant support. According to Toda, the main goal of the experiment is far from being just pure entertainment. In his opinion, the data obtained from the flight of a paper airplane in space could help scientists to improve the designs of true space shuttles. The safe return of a small object through the atmosphere could prove that lightweight materials can withstand high operating loads. That sounds, of course, highly promising. However, most engineers do not share Toda's enthusiasm. According to experts, a paper airplane will simply burn up in the atmosphere and never reach the Earth. But it won't be destroyed right away. Instead, a paper mini shuttle will hang in orbit for several days. Then it will begin to approach the atmosphere. Usually, objects falling into the Earth's upper atmospheric layer from space are flying at a crazy speed of Mach 20. That's 20 times faster than the speed of sound. Traveling at such a high speed makes the objects heat up to about 1,590 degrees Celsius or 2,900 degrees Fahrenheit, resulting in them burning up without a trace at an altitude of 59 kilometers or about 37 miles above the Earth's surface. Considering the small mass of a paper airplane, we might face a slightly different situation. First, the paper plane will accelerate to Mach 6 at an altitude of 99 kilometers or about 62 miles above the Earth. Then the paper structure will quickly burn up. So it appears very likely that the airplane won't last for long. Toda and his partner Suzuki finally decided to consider the critic's opinion and covered the planes with a special heat-resistant glass. For his trial, Suzuki launched one such mini shuttle into a hypersonic wind tunnel where the airflow rate reached Mach 7. Within 10 seconds, the aircraft warmed up to 200 degrees Celsius, about 400 Fahrenheit, and remained intact. This result gave the scientists a reason to continue their project. To launch from the International Space Station, Toda and Suzuki made nine miniature heat-resistant shuttles to be launched from the station. The length of each, 38 centimeters or about 15 inches, and width of about 22 centimeters or 9 inches. On the bottom of each aircraft, there was a note written by the engineers in 10 languages, which urged people who found these origami planes to contact the JAXA Space Agency. Fans of the paper planes were getting ready to catch these mini shuttles in different parts of the world. But unfortunately, for unknown reasons, the project was suspended. Despite this, Toda's and Suzuki's idea did not die. The experiment was carried on by three Britons, who were inspired by the dream of the two Japanese scientists. These three Britons, Steve Daniels, John Oates, and Lester Hines, decided not to depend on anyone and to launch their paper airplane into space by using their own financial resources. 
Their choice of model airplane was larger than the one designed by the Japanese engineers. The aircraft enthusiast made a glider and attached a video camera to it, then placed it in a weather probe, a large balloon with helium inside and instruments that track the object's location. The launch operation was given a romantic name, Paris. However, the beautiful name did not help the craft to fly to space. The balloon with the airplane inside rose to an altitude of 27 kilometers, or about 16.7 miles above the Earth burst and released the glider into free flight. The craft landed in the wilderness just outside of Madrid, only 160 kilometers or about 100 miles from its launch point. The aircraft remained almost intact with the exception of some slight damage done to the wing. But despite the fact that the airplane had never been to outer space, the trio of British amateurs believed that the experiment was a success. Unlike the Japanese engineers, they put their skills to work just for fun and not for the sake of scientific achievement. Samsung employees were much more serious about the space launch of a paper airplane in the Project Space Planes advertising campaign. The Project Space Planes team, led by animator Joe Weich, launched a weather probe and 200 paper airplanes. But unlike their predecessors, Weich decided not to rely on ordinary paper and made small aircraft from thick cardboard. In addition, each aircraft was equipped with a stabilizer to help it withstand the wind, and also with a tiny memory card that contained a message asking for information about the location of the aircraft. But despite all the attempts, the Project Space Plane's weather probe could not reach space. The flight of the weather probe with cardboard mini-shuttles inside lasted 2 hours and 36 minutes. During this time, it climbed to an altitude of 37 kilometers or 23 miles over Germany, then burst and the cardboard planes were launched to freedom one right after another. According to Weich, there were reports about sightings of the airplanes coming to him from all over the world, including Canada, Australia, India, and even South Africa. In the end, Samsung was able to advertise their memory cards, but did not succeed in sending airplanes into space. It's still not known when the first successful paper airplane launch into space or from the ISS will happen. But experiments with golf balls have been much more successful. In 2006, the Federal Space Agency of Russia and the Canadian golf company Element 21 entered into a commercial agreement. Within the framework of this agreement, flight engineer Mikhail Kurin launched a gold-plated golf ball weighing about 3 grams, that's 0.1 ounces, into outer space with one blow. NASA representatives suggest that it flew 1.6 million kilometers, that's about a million miles around the Earth. Then it hung for a few days and then entered the atmosphere. Falling at hypersonic speed, the golf ball surely burned up due to the extreme heat. However, Mr. Turin is not the first space golfer. According to astronaut Alan Shepard, he left a couple of golf balls on the moon. During the Apollo 14 mission in 1971, Shepard decided to have some fun. He used a device meant for collecting moon dust as a golf club and hit several golf balls. So. When mass space tourism becomes a reality, it's quite possible that during a tour of the Moon's surface, you might stumble upon these earthly objects. However, you may find more than just golf balls. According to NASA, the astronauts left many items on the Moon. For example, a golden olive branch, a falcon feather, a portrait of astronaut James Irwin, about a hundred $2 bills, and a spear. So that was how the astronauts wanted to be remembered in space. I'm very curious, what would you like to leave on the moon or launch into space if you had the opportunity? Write your ideas in the comments. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already done so. Also, don't forget to click on the bell to enable notifications about the release of new videos. And stay with us! 
There's a whole lot more interesting stuff coming in future episodes. And don't forget to recommend us to your friends. Science is much more fun together.